Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head to Dalarna County once again, and we're going to revisit a brewery who I've only ever reviewed one beer from, but the last one that I had from them was quite an impressive beer actually, I really quite enjoyed it. I'm sure it was called the White Horse IPA, and it was one of the last white IPAs that I ever reviewed on the channel for you actually. So for this one, we are going to return to Selen's Fjell Brewery, and we're having a taste of their Fjell Ripa. So this is basically the Mountain Red IPA if you want to translate that into uh, into English. But it should be a really nice beer. You don't actually see too many specific red IPAs actually. And the reason I found this one, this brewery just kind of popped into my head one day. So I put their name into say Stimbolaga again and this beer popped up and I thought well style that I really like. Let's order this one with my next kind of small party and things. And here we are. So um, yeah this guy is a red IPA coming in at 6.3% and I hope this one is as good as the White Horse that I reviewed for you maybe about two or three years ago now actually it's been a long time since I've reviewed anything from these guys so here's hoping it's a good beer and as always I hope you guys enjoy my take on this beer so anyway as is usual with my reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery if you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Selen's Fjord Burgery before. Hopefully I can add some more in the fairly near future. There's all the usual social media. If you want to see more beer reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, or whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlists of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Swedish beers that I've reviewed for you, that's constantly being added to, and as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos, and the support that you show the channel is hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Selen's Fjell Bregory then. So this brewery, is, as the name suggests, is based in the small town of Selen in Dalarna County. If you go up to um, Yevla on the kind of east coast of Sweden and then just go straight west, that is pretty much where you will find it. Um, Selen just uh, before the Norwegian border. It looks as if it's about 40 50 kilometres away from the Norwegian border. But the brewery itself was founded back in 2012 by Pelle Hoffman and Magnus Engström, who together own the Gustav Ga uh, Bar and Grill restaurant in Linvalen in the town. But they also own the Hemfjallstugen and also the Fjellbagern restaurants as well in the town. But Pelle had been home brewing for a number of years and he'd actually won a few competitions and he then decided that he wanted to sell the beers in the restaurants, which went down very, very well. But initially they were only producing very small 50 litre batches of these and so they were very prolific in producing a lot of different beers and uh, experimenting a lot with recipes as well and the positive reaction prompted them to actually put their beers into sea stemble like it as well so they started off with a smaller capacity when they, when they started the brewery up officially they started up with a capacity of around 200 litres per brew but they've now moved to a new premises in Lienfallen and they've got a 2000 litre brew kit there from the Czech Republic which gives them an annual output of around 250,000 litres of beer when they started up but I believe they have expanded this a little bit or they are planning to expand it over the next little while so um, yeah as I say I've only ever tried one beer from these guys they've got a core range which has three or four beers in it they've got a seasonal range and they've also got limited edition beers that they do as well but I remember being very impressed with the White Horse IPA that I had from these guys so I won't, this is a brewery that I will need to try and keep an eye on. There's so many craft breweries here in Sweden these days, you know, you're talking about three, uh, at least 300, I think there's near 400 actually uh, at this point in time, but there's so many little craft breweries here in Sweden that it's quite difficult to actually keep track of uh, all the ones that you try, but the quality of beer over here is pretty damn good, I have to say, and it all comes from that kind of culture of home brewing that there seems to be mainly because the uh, the sea stembo lager rules are so uh, are so strict. But yeah, um, that's all you really need to know about Salem's Fjallbrugge, just now it's cool to try another beer from Dalarna County, of course. There are some pretty good breweries up there. Of course, we all know Opie Gords, um, who are one of the kind of famous farmhouse breweries. And uh, this was another one that I was quite impressed with. So yeah, um, let's get rid of the brewery notes then and we can get on to the actual tasting of this beer itself then. So as I told you at the start of the video, this one is a 6.3% red IPA. It's hot with Chinook and Amarillo apparently. I always used to love Amarillo. Um, it's a beautiful kind of oily orange flavour hop you get from that. From Chinook you'll get some very kind of resinous piney notes and also a bit of grapefruit. So it should be a really interesting beer. And I mean, like I say, um, it's not often you find a red IPA these days. Or I think they can also be called American Ambers, to be honest. I don't think there's that much of a difference between the... Um, 
the American Ambers and the American Red Ales and stuff like that. I always like the New Zealand Imperial Reds. I absolutely love that. One of the best ones I ever had was called First Blood from Eight Wired Brewing Company in New Zealand. But there you can see some nice, kind of like, almost like Lodge style artwork on this one, like the animals heads on the wall and things like that. Um, kind of, it reminds me of an old lodge. Uh, so I like the artwork on this one. And there is the uh, the bottle cap on this one. I think this is different to the original Salem's bottle cap that I actually have. But um, it says here that Salem's Fjallbreggery is a little brewery uh, that is that lives basically in Lean Valley in East Salem. Um, we were founded in 2012 and we uh, found that we have our, our roots in the home brewing tradition. Um, Fjell Reaper is a Red India Paleo with an Amer or in the American style, if you like, or in the American mould, I guess you would literally translate it as. So, um, yeah, it should be a really interesting beer, this. Let's get it out and we'll get on with the tasting then. This one, incidentally, is available uh, year-round through Seistan Balai. When you open this up, actually, you can really smell the Amarillo jumping out of it. It's almost got a little bit of a kind of candied aroma when we open it up as well. But, yeah, let's give the last little bit of sugar. And there you are. Ooh, that went a little bit further than I thought it was going to, but there we are. So yeah, as you can see from this one, and as you would kind of expect, this one's poured a lovely, I would say, it's somewhere between mahogany, and it does have a little bit of a ruby edge to it as well, a very, very kind of dark amber colour, this one. You can see there's a solid finger and a half of a frothy, I would say kind of, that's not quite a fawn colour, it's more of a kind of very light beige creamy colour this one. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass and a few little ones um, just heading up towards the uh, the bottom of that head there. But you know, overall it does smell uh, pretty nice actually. So yeah, looks or it does look pretty nice I see. If I put my fingers behind the glass you can see there is a degree of haze to this one. But I think, you know, it's probably based on the West Coast IPA. So it will have a little bit of haze but it's not anywhere near as hazy as some of the New England beers that uh, you're going to come across. This is one of their very early beers incidentally. They've done this one since the very early days actually. And this is a style that I always used to enjoy but as I say you just don't see too many of them around actually. But um, I did review one from Uland uh, recently, if I remember correctly, which was kind of interesting too. Um, but yeah, let's take a closer look at the aroma of this beer then and just see how we get on. Nothing particularly surprising about this one in terms of its uh, its appearance. A nice dark, uh, ambery mahogany colour. Oh. oh, you can hear my stomach going, getting hungry for this. But yeah. With this beer then, straight away, what you're going to notice about this is the slightly stronger malty character that it has. You know, you're always going to expect this from an amber or, um, you know, a red IPA. They've always got a bit more of a stronger malty base to them. So you can smell a nice little bit of bready quality in there. It does have a little bit of a brown bread edge to it, like a little bit like a bread crust kind of thing. You've got a nice bit of a toasty caramel note in there, some biscuity aromas as well. And I do wonder if there's a little touch of rye in here, because it does have... You know, it does have a little bit of a kind of spicy edge to it. I'm not sure if that is right. And, you know, that was something that uh, I remember Brewdog, for example, back home in Scotland doing um, a lot of red rye IPAs and things like that. So I'm not sure how, if you know, if you do a red IPA, is it a technical thing that it has to have uh, red rye in it or something? But I do suspect there might be a little bit of, um, of rye in here, like, something like that. But it does say on the back of the bottle they've just used corn malt, which basically is, you know, barley malt, essentially. Because usually the Swedish beers will say if uh, they've used wheat or oats and things like this too. But it doesn't say that, so maybe they haven't used rye. But yeah, um, it does smell. The malt base of this one smells really nice. It, it's quite bready. Nice little bit of like a toasty bread crust kind of thing to it. Some toasty caramel in there. Kind of a sweeter caramel rather than anything. But it does have a little toasty edge to it. And you've also got a little bit of a biscuity sweetness in there as well, which is quite nice. So um, yeah, on the hoppy side of things then... Um, I mean, there's a little teeny touch of earthiness in there. I will say, you can smell with this beer, it's not at it's, not at its absolute freshest. I mean, I think this beer's maybe about two months old, something like that, I'm guessing from the aroma. It's not quite at its, its prime freshness, if you like. But you will still get a good experience out of this, I think. Particularly, I've always found the red IPAs, if you let them just sit a little bit, you can get a really nice balance between the hops and the malts, actually. Um... But yeah, nice little bit of a floral aromaticity to this one. You can smell some of the resinous notes from the Chinook, actually. You really can smell some of those coming out. But you've also got a nice little bit of a lighter kind of grassiness in there as well. But the pine resins from the Chinook and the... Um 
the pine resins from the Chinook and the sort of floral aromaticity is definitely coming out of this one but it's not quite as big and bold as you might get from some you know double IPAs or things like this but yeah on the fruity side of things definitely a nice big um, oily orange coming out of this one and it does evolve a little bit to be kind of candied and fruity there does almost it almost smells this beer a little bit like it's got a slightly candied strawberry note or candied berry or something like that just the further just the more and more you smell of it actually and it depends on the hops because you know if you think about a cascadian dark or a black ipa you know, when you actually mix different hops with different malt bases, you will get slightly different fruits out of them. But I've always found, you know, that Amarillo is pretty straight up. It will always give you a nice kind of um, orangey flavour and things. I've had stouts that have had Simcoe in them and they've given you some really unusual flavours. So to me, the fruity side of this beer is quite orangey, mainly oily and orange, which is what you'd expect from the... Um, from the, the Amarillo, I suspect we'll get a bit of grapefruit in the flavour because the Chinook is there, it's a big, you know, resinous grapefruit beast of a thing, but there's also a little bit of a kind of candied um, strawberry, candied berry kind of thing coming out of the aroma of this beer. So as I always say, take a little bit of time and just enjoy the aroma before you get stuck into it, but we are going to have a taste of this one now. So this one is the Fiel Reaper, the Mountain Red IPA, coming in at 6.3% from Salem's Fiel Breger, the Salem's Mountain Brewery uh, in Dalarna County. Uh, here in Sweden. We're really looking forward to trying this one. Let's get stuck in. Slange, skull. Yeah. That's pretty nice actually. I really like the way the malt goes together in this one. You know, that is one thing I should say is if you've watched the channel for a while, you will know that I do like my big uh, malty beers. I've always I've been, you know, I have complained over the last year or so when we've been having all the New England IPAs. I have missed the uh, the west, the more west coast type IPAs that have the nice sweet malty backbone to them. You know, this is a nice beer. Uh, this one as well. I'm finding on the first sip that it does lean a little bit. It has got a good little bit of grainy character to it. It's, it's almost got a sort of spicy quality to it, which is kind of interesting. But yeah, this is a nice beer. And it's got a hell of a lot of flavour in it. And I'm sure I said the same about the, the White Horse as well when I reviewed that. Yeah, that's nice. Um, and finally, yeah, on the second sip, it does sweeten up a little bit. So this beer, first on first impact, it is going to give you a good little bit of a kind of grainy quality. But um, you know, in second, when you actually adjust to it a little bit more, it does come across as being a lot more sweet and a lot smoother actually. But this is a nice beer in terms of a red IPA. Make no mistake about that. The other thing I'm noticing about this one is you can feel how kind of clean this one is you know it's it's from the countryside in sweden it's from right next to the border with norway their water up there is going to be really pretty good and being scottish of course with all the whiskey background and things like that you know you do notice good quality water in the beers i said the same about the icelandic beers when i was reviewing those a couple of years ago and um, when you get these beers from the north of sweden and from norway and things like that even from some random places here in sweden you do get um beers that just feel very very clean in terms of their uh, you know they feel very clean in terms of their uh, their profile and stuff like that but yeah I like how this one I really like how this one goes together so let's try and break the flavor down a little bit then sorry about that guys a little bit of noise going on outside so just pause the video but yeah um, as I was saying let's break down the flavour of this um, this beer a little bit more yeah so what you're going to notice with this one right away is right across the middle of your palate you're going to get that nice smooth bready quality to the beer and it does have a nice it, it's almost a little bit like a german brown bread actually i think from the smoothness of the malts they've used in here i would suspect that it's german malt probably possibly vireman malts they've used in this one you know if you drink a lot of the beers from bamberg and um, in franconia in germany their big malt company is um is a environment and you can really taste the smoothness in this. So I, I suspect, I, I don't know for sure, but I suspect they might have used a little bit of environment malt in here as the base of the beer because it's got that lovely, smooth, um, almost German brown bready quality to it. It does have a little bit of a toasty element to it, this beer. You do get some kind of grainy, spicy notes to it. I don't think it's, it's definitely not black malt. You wouldn't have the beer being this colour 
Um, if it was black mode, it would be a hell of a lot darker, to be honest. Um, but yeah, it does, in the middle of your palette, and the further you go into the aftertaste, you can really feel that the centre of your palette just dries out a little bit, and you start to get some of the... Um, you start to get some of the grainy um, aspects out of this beer. I do suspect a little bit of rye. In the very centre of your palette too, you get a nice sweet caramelly note to it. It's got a little bit of a toasty edge to it, I would say, as well, which is kind of interesting. Yeah. The caramel part of the beer is actually um, really nice and you can feel Earlier on in the flavour, when you move out from the centre of your palate, you get that nice sort of um, biscuity sweetness to the beer as well, which is really interesting. You do get that, you can feel that as you move out from the centre of your palate, you can just, you can feel that moving a little bit. Uh, you can feel that as you move out from the very centre of your tongue too. There's maybe a teeny, teeny little bit of an almost very slightly nutty quality. If you go to the very centre of your palate and then just come forward, there's a little, a very slight touch of a slightly nutty flavour to this one, which is interesting. But yeah, I like, as I say, I like how everything goes together in this beer. This is definitely one of these beers where it's not about being bold in any one regard. It's just all about how the different flavours kind of uh, go together. And everything in the malt base of this one goes together really nicely. It does have even a little bit of that slightly grainy edge that you might expect of a red rye IPA. I don't know, it doesn't say that it's a red rye IPA, it just says that it's a red IPA. So um, yeah, I'm not quite sure what to make of that exactly, but you know, it comes across very nicely actually. I do like how all the flavours go together in this one. So yeah, in terms of the hoppy side of the beer then, in the back corners of the palate, there's a little touch of earthiness in there. Um, I do wonder if they've used, uh, you know, if they've maybe used a, a another bittering hop in here as well as the Chinook because there is that little bit of earthiness in there and from what I remember you don't get too much earthiness from Chinook or from Amarillo but I, there is a little touch of earthiness there and that builds a good bridge between the um, the sort of grainy aspect of the malt base and stuff but as you come further forward along the sides of your tongue you can feel there's a little bit of a it does evolve to be a little bit more floral and spicy and you do get some of the more piney resinous characters that you'd expect of the Chinook and you can feel those right up towards the front corners of the tongue then round the very front curve of your palate it's a little bit lighter and more uh, and more grassy I would say and behind the front curve of the tongue that's where you get that nice oily bubble where those juicy fruity esters start to push their weight out of the beer. Yeah, and for me this is really quite nice. Surprisingly, there's not really a lot in terms of the, the grapefruity side of the things. I would expect a little bit of grapefruit from the um, from the Chinook. I've always found Chinook to have quite a bit of a grapefruity presence to it. But mainly this one's leaning towards the kind of oily, orangey qualities that you'd normally expect of Amarillo. You can really feel that <clears throat> pretty much taking up the whole of that sort of oily part near the front of your tongue, which is quite nice. And then... Um, yeah, everything in the this beer it goes as I say it goes together really quite well. The juicy oranges build a good, um, you know, they build a, the sort of juicy oily orangey quality of this beer. It builds a good bridge with the the sweeter side of the malt base, which is kind of interesting as well. Um, but yeah, the further you go into the aftertaste, you do get a little element of a kind of candied fruit out of this, and it's maybe a very slight sort of candied orange, candied strawberry type thing. But you know, overall, this is a really pretty nice beer, and you know, this is two beers I've been quite impressed with now. I do like my IPAs to be a little bit more kind of malty and things like that. So um, yeah, this one at least for me it suits what I would kind of want from the style. So in terms of the mouthfeel then, I would say um, this is a mid-bodied beer, carbonation is very smooth, the mouthfeel really is leaning towards the oily side of things, at the same time you can feel that this beer is kind of quite clean almost because you know you can tell that it's a slightly more, you know that you can tell that it's the mountain water that's in there. A lot of people, are, there's a lot of people I've argued with them before about this that they say oh water doesn't affect the flavour of the beer, bollocks, it absolutely does, you know. I mean, different whiskies and stuff, you can taste the different waters and things like that. And in my opinion, you can taste the quality of the water uh, in this beer. The malt base has a really good balance between the sort of more grainy, slightly spicy aspects and also a good little bit of smoothness and sweetness in there. So the malt base for me is really quite nicely balanced in this one. I would say it leans a little bit more towards the grainy side of things and that comes out a little bit more the further you go into the aftertaste. But nonetheless, it's very well balanced. Um, good bit of nice hoppy bitterness in there. I think you're looking around 40 or maybe 50 IB using this one at most, I think maybe nearer 50. Um, 
But yeah, the IBU count on this one's quite nice. You do get some of those nice dank resiny things that you want from an American West Coast style beer. Uh, and you've also got a nice kind of juicy and oily fruity character to this one as well. But overall, a, a really quite nice beer, this one. This is the second beer I've had from Selen's Fjell Brewery that I've been impressed with. So I need to have a look at something maybe from the darker side of the spectrum next time and just uh, and see who we go on. Maybe a stout or a porter or something like that because that's always a good way to get a measure of a brewery. Trying something from the light side and something from the dark side but yeah a nice beer this one and i have enjoyed having a taste of this one for you so i hope that you guys have enjoyed it um but yeah let's leave it at that for this one this one is the fiel ripa the basically the red the mountain red ipa from salem's fiel brewery uh just in salem just kind of near the norwegian border out to the west of Gävle in dalarna county in sweden once again thank you for watching my beer reviews until the next time please like subscribe share all the usual youtube stuff let me know your own thoughts on this one in the comment section below let me know what your favorite beers are from salem's fjell brewery as well and i'll definitely return to these guys in the fairly near future probably having a look at one of their darker beers but let me know your own thoughts on this one in the comment section below check out my social media and i will catch you guys very soon the fjell ripa the mountain red ipa from salem's fjell brewery in um from Salem's Fjell Brewery in, uh, what was the name, I forget the name of the town, basically in Dalarna, in Salem's, and there's another little town in there as well, in Dalarna County here in Sweden. Until the next time, Slanges now, and I'll catch you guys later. Skull.